Hello, this is Charlene Mosier from the Foff Crave Sewing Center, Lacey, Washington, and Sound Sewing, Silverda, Washington. Today, this demo is on the Husqvarna Viking Brilliant 75Q. This is the machine. It's a really nice white, red, and black machine. It has a 10-inch throat inside the machine itself. Touch key command but, but, uh, buttons right here. An automatic needle threader. It does come off to give you a free arm. This piece here, which I'm a little far away from. There we go. That can pop out and go back on. The machine itself will do about 460 sewing stitches, which includes four full sewing alphabets. The machine does a standard seven millimeter stitch field while doing the decorative stitches, but it can do up to 54 millimeter wide Omni stitches, which are uh, stitches that can sew outside the, the seven inch seven millimeter field and that 54 millimeter is a little bit more than two inches in size. It does have an interactive touch screen right over here and it does also have the auto needle pivot as well as the start stop key. It does come with a foot control and then the exclusive fabric advisor that Viking is known for. Let's go over the parts. So these are some of the standard parts right here. It does come with the buttonhole foot. It does come with a needle inserter. It also has the single needle plate. It does come with its standard zigzag plate directly on the machine itself for doing all the decorative stitches. But the single needle plate is great for doing those sheer fabrics or if you're a quilter, the fabrics, the triangles that like to push down into the zigzag opening. This is a great plate to prevent that. It does come with a couple spool nets for your more persnickety threads a touch screen cleaning cloth. It does have a uh, lint brush cleaner as well as it does come with a seam ripper. I just don't have it out right now. And then a screwdriver, a starter set of needles, and then it does come with a total of four caps, two large, one medium, one small. I do have a couple on a machine right now and a couple felts. Then if we reposition you here right now onto the tray, the tray opens up in the back for all of these goodies to actually get put away back there. So let me do that real quick. The single needle plate does fit fully into that bin in the back, which is nice, and that does close. Once you have everything set in there correctly, there we go, it does close. Then the front opens up and there, and there are all your feet as well as your bobbins. It does come with about four to five bobbins. I just only have two out with it right now. On the machine, when you get it out of the box, we'll have the A foot. And then it does come with, um, which this is the A foot right now. I actually have the B pattern foot on right now. And then it does come with your overcasting, your blind hem, a, um, a non-stick foot. You do have your uh, quarter inch foot does come with this, a manual buttonhole, a zipper foot, a free motion or darning or free motion and quilting, embroidery foot, as well as the really large S foot for those Omni stitches I mentioned earlier for doing that, those really big 54 millimeter stitches. Your bobbins just snap right inside here for the bobbin savers so that they don't unravel and get stuck together. I really do like this feature. And then again, just closes right up. On the machine itself, you do have a needle down function. You can control the needle down by the foot control. We will show you that later. Also what they've done is they've removed the pressure foot lift. There is no pressure foot lift, so I control it by doing pressure foot up or down. Or if I just start to sew, the foot will lower and, and begin to sew. So no more forgetting to lower your pressure feet. It does have a built-in scissor action, so it will cut my top and bottom thread for me at the end of each seam if I ask it to. A fix, which is also known as a tie-off. A stop key, which is basically a tie-off at the end of the pattern. You do have a speed control where you can regulate how fast or slow you want the machine to go. There's my start stop key I talked about earlier and your standard reverse. The thread lays horizontally right on the machine and is uh, just pulls right off through the threading. You can thread it from here as well to go to the bobbin winder mechanism, which is way over here. So you do not have to unthread your machine to wind the bobbin. You can thread it through the needle or we do also have another spool pin right here that you can use to thread the machine, wind the bobbin or you can also run twin needles. 
And if you want this one to be vertical, you can as well. Just make sure not to have the spool cap so tight to it so it can rotate freely. So I'm just going to put those down right now. And let's go over and get to know the screen. So here we are at the screen, and the screen is right now at its default stitch, which is straight stitch. When you turn it on, I believe it actually looks like this when you turn it on. And it's telling me up, up here, it has a foot, and it says the letter A, because it's telling me it prefers foot A for this stitch. And it's showing me all the stitches. I can actually uh, arrow through to see all my stitches throughout all the categories. Or, if you notice that there is this little triangle up here by the zigzag, for the menu, I can hold that and my quick menus will open up. And right now C is highlighted because I had scrolled through and I got all the way over to the C menu. So it actually goes all the way to, from A all the way to quite far. There is a stylus on the side of the machine itself, so I will just go ahead and just scroll all the way down. So it goes all the way to you. So U is your personal uh, menu. So uh, S is actually the far as you can go with the built-in stitches that are actually in there. So when I was to when I was doing this, now I could either scroll. I could scroll through by touching up here. And then I can say that I want this one. I notice that right here I have all these dots right by the F, and that's letting me know that there are multiple pages. So I can scroll through and see the multiple pages. These are also all listed in the manual itself. It does come with it. It does come with a um, printed manual. And then if I was to touch the stitch I want, it would come up and tell me I need to be on letter B and that I am ready to sew. And it tells you down here that I am in F42, so I'm in... Um, menu F and stitch 42 of menu F. If I go back into the pencil, it would tell me where my stitch tension is at and my width and my length. So let's show you what this will look like. Alright, so what do I do is just get, get a piece of denim right here. And I am going to zoom out a bit so you guys can see a little bit of what I'm doing on my panel up here. So I'm going to tell it that I want my pressure foot down. I'm just going to put the pressure foot down. If I decide that I need to fine tune this a little bit, if I press down again, it'll go into a hover mode. So it just raises the foot just far enough that I can just fine tune where I want this. And I can press it down again. Now I just start to sew. <laughs> is by pressing the scissors on my keypad it took it to the end of the pattern and it's going to tie off and cut and then there is my sewing stitch right there so that's a sample of one of the seven millimeter stitches this machine also has some specialty stitches that are built in so we have um, if I go back into my menu let's bring you over I'm going back into my menu so I'm going to go back into my menu and I'm going to scroll down here I should watch on the screen and not through the camera. Easier for me to hit this. Is in pattern L, these are called dimensional stitches. So these are stitches that have dimension to add to them. So these first sets are applique stitches. And if I scroll through, I can see that I then have what's called pop-up stitches. And then I have sequence stitches. And then if I keep going, a couple menus later in N, I have embellished stitches, which has uh, um, oh, what are they called? They're called um, <laughs> oh, crystal stitches or fringe. I haven't sewn these all out. I was just playing a little bit, but let me show you what some of these mean. So on the other ones where they, they were they were the applique. These are this is one of the applique stitches where an applique was added to the stitch of fabric, and same with this one, the flowers. So these were added to, and these are sewing stitches, not embroidery. Okay. The other ones that were in that area were called the um, pop-up stitches. So that's where you can add like fringe or I added the, these organzas to give it a little bit fun funness. And another one I've done is I also did some sequencing. Would that be fun to do like a, a Christmas tree wall hanging and then do this all the way around different colors like they were the Christmas lights? 
Then I also do have a sample of the embellished stitches, which these are fringed. So these are literally fringed, okay? So that they have been sewn kind of three-dimensional. So you can see real close there. Let me show you how some of these are done. They are pretty easy. I am going to do a applique one. So let me go back to my applique menu. And I'm going to select number six on this one. Only well, because I can. That's the only reason. I'm going to use the same, the same one. I'm not even going to change my thread for now. I'm just going to leave it the same. In fact, I do see I have some green fabric here. So for this, I would actually activate what's called my needle down. So I'd come right up here till I want, every time I stop, I want to stop with the needle down. So I automatically put my needle down for me. And I'm not going to use my foot control. I'm going to use my start stop key so that I know that the machine stopped where it was supposed to. That it's actually stopping in its correct spot. Okay. So I am going to go ahead and press go. It's going to do the first part of the decorative stitch here for me. I do have the incorrect foot on, which I just discovered. So what's really neat about this machine is I can stop, I can cut my thread. And on the machine itself, on the screen, if I come back over here, because I know I made a oops, see right here it told me to change the foot, but I got so excited to show you guys, I forgot. I can go back into my pencil here, which these are the settings for the stitch, and we tell it to start at the beginning. Okay, so if you had changed your width, your length, your tensions, anything, when you tell it to start back at the beginning, it would take it right back to the beginning of the stitch and keep all your settings. I'm gonna take off this foot here, open up my panel, and the foot I want is this one way over here, the actual S foot. This is the one that's meant for the make a, um, the Omni stitches. So these are the stitches that sew larger than the seven millimeter field. Okay, and again, I don't have to remember the machine told me, I just didn't pay attention. Okay, so now I'm going to come down a little bit farther and I'm going to start again. There we go. Could it sew with the other foot? It might have been able to sew with the other foot, but we may not be able to have sewn it properly. That's why it was important to do this. And it sews straight down and then it's going to stop and it raised the foot when the needle's down. That's called the pivot mode. So it did that so I could take a piece of fabric here and I'm going to raise this up for just the filming purposes here and notice when I told to raise the foot up it also did automatically uh, leave my needle down which is nice not all brands do that this one does so I'm going to sneak this in and bring it all up to the needle okay so I brought it up to the needle in there let's see if I can get you guys in a little bit better okay then I'm going to press the go key and now it's going to stitch right on top of this Okay, it's going to stop again. Okay, and now I'm going to just tell it to do the next decorative stitch. And went straight forward again. So then I could take another piece of fabric and I'm making these quite big. They don't need to be as big as I am. Again, we raise this up to bring this into the back, bring it all the way up to the needle. Make sure I straighten out my fabric because that's the only thing I, the first time I did this is I didn't make sure my fabric stayed straight. And so I had a very drunk set of stitches. Okay, so now what I would do is I'd cut my thread. And now I'm going to bring this down to right here so we can see better. So right here. Okay, so here they are in the stitches I have done. And I take my scissors, my little applique scissors, and this is a raw applique technique. I come in here and I just gently come in. It's easier to do not through the camera, <laughs> but that's okay. And then we would just cut this away. That's how I get my applique in there. Now let's do the other one. And you guys get the idea, but I wanted to show you this to you done. Do, 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 do. I know I'm a little north of my screen, but I'm trying to use the machine as my 
other set of hands here. <laughs> Quit focusing on my hand. There we go. And of course, you take the time to get it really nice and clean. I did it kind of fast, but there we go. It's a decorative stitch. And you notice what I did before is I started and I realized I had the wrong foot and I stopped and I told it to do a pattern restart. It did go back to the beginning. So that's a nice feature of the machine as well. The uh, the fringe stitch, that is a little different too, so i like to show you that. So what I'm going to do is I am going to change the bobbin real quick so I can just show you the fringe stitch because it's a little bit easier to see if you can see it with a different color bobbin. So I'm just going to really quickly change out my bobbin. So another nice thing about this machine is it does take an L-class pre-wound bobbin or you can use the Viking empty bobbins and if you have it incorrectly it'll fall directly in but if you put it in wrong it won't go in it you can't get it in so with the viking bobbins you know if you're putting it in wrong which is fantastic so i'm going to drop it in it dropped in all the way get it up into its tension then also on the needle plate cover uh, the bobbin cover this is a magnifier okay so if you need to read the top of your needles see what size they are this magnifier can really help you not all machines have that either, but I really like that this one does. Okay, I'm gonna come from this direction now, and now I'm just gonna go in and select my uh, fringe stitch, which is gonna be in N for embellishment stitches, and I'm doing number three. And then I'll just sew. And again, wrong foot. <laughs> That's okay. I'm just getting so excited to show you all these things. I should've gone to the pattern foot like it told me. But you'll see, it will be able to do it. So this is, is a pattern foot. It's just the other pattern foot isn't as big, so I'd be able to see better. Okay, I'm going to press the stop key. And what it's going to do is it's going to finish this fringe for me, and then it's going to tie off, and then I'm going to tell it to cut. So here is the fringe stitch when it's sewn. So a moment ago in this demo, I showed you, oh, it's on the floor. <laughs> okay, I showed it to you as an actual fringe. See how that's actually fringed? So how to do this is you sew the fringe stitch and we turn it over and you can see where I have this lighter, this lighter thread right here. Is I'm gonna come in with my thread snips and I am going to bring this directly in and cut that lighter thread on the bottom of my stitch, okay? I'm gonna do it to the next one too, just nice and carefully, just again, making sure to only do the bobbin. I'm gonna turn it over, that's where your stylus really helps you. And I'm gonna help bring these forward, just like that. Just, is that the other one? Yeah, that's the other one I did. So just like, like that, and then I'd pull out that other thread, and that's it, they're fringed. Isn't that neat? That would be really cute on a little blouse, or on a pillow itself, giving it some really nice dimension and texture, okay? And then of course we have sequencing and all of that as well. The next thing I would like to show you that this machine will do is, if I come back over to my screen here, is this machine here as I come through the stitches and that's the other thing if you don't know where you want to go you could just scroll through and it has tapering stitches and it has uh, single omni stitches but this right here is for four way stitches so these can stitch in four different direction so let's say you have a pair of pants and you need to put a, a uh, patch right on the knee you can't sew that by machine because you need the free arm and you can't turn in the free arm so what we're going to do is we're going to use this feature right here. We're going to touch that. I am then going to come back over here. And I am going to go ahead and grab another piece of denim. And this one does want the S foot. So I did look. It does want the S foot. And let's say I have this patch. Now if you have a free arm in here, you can't rotate it. So if I put my whole leg, my pant leg in here, I wouldn't be able to do that. So with this, let's get you guys, let's get you guys into the view here. Okay. 
So what this one can do is, I'm going to come in and I'm just going to start about yay far. And I have told it that I want to sew a triple straight stitch. So when I sew, it's going to sew sideways. See how it's sewing sideways like that? I sew over as far as I want. Okay, and then now I'm going to touch my, I'm going to touch my reverse key just once. And now on my screen, ah, my screen, the stitch is now going down. A moment ago it was going sideways. So now it's going down. When I touch my reverse key again, it'll go right to left. And then when I touch my touch it again, it'll go from bottom to top. So it'll keep rotating on my screen. So all I have to do is just sew. Now it's going from top to bottom. Okay, so now I'm going to touch my reverse again. Now it's going to go from right to left. And now I'm going to touch it again. It's going to go from bottom to top. And when I get up to the top, I will press my scissors. Okay, so I'm going to press my scissors. And it's going to stop and it's going to cut. And then it's going to raise my foot for me so I can pull it out. And now you can see how it, I sewed this patch on with just a straight stitch. Now there's other stitches as well. There are zigzag stitches. There is, there's 11 total. There is um, kind of like overcast stitching and a uh, honeycomb stitch. And so you can do different stitches so that you can get a finished edge if you like as well. Okay, so I, it's up to you. Just for filming purposes, I want to go ahead and do the straight stitch. All right, let me tell you about the Fabric Advisor. Here's our screen right here with the, your, your stitch menus and your settings and all that, and how you can, in our classes, you learn how to mimic all this. But down here at the bottom is what's called the Fabric Advisor. So if we were to scroll just in here a bit, the Fabric Advisor is broken up into several fabrics on the top and different techniques. So if you wanted to do something that uh, was like sewing a buttonhole on leather, but you didn't know what was the correct uh, buttonhole stitch for a uh, button for that. You would actually come all the way over here to G because that's leather and I would touch G. Now how I know what it is is if I come up here into my screen real quick I can then come up here and go into my pencil and when I touch G it's going to tell me right here that I'm on leather. Okay so it does tell me right here. It does tell you in the book as well but you can oh come on come on camera work with me. Okay, right there. So you can uh, select the different buttons down here to know which one it is. The next thing I want to do, so that was this one right here. Now I'm going to touch, now the bottom ones are different applications where I could do a seam, I could do a finishing, a uh, finishing, an overcast, a basting, a hem, um, a, I think that's a finished hem, and then of course the buttonhole. So I'm going to touch buttonhole and now when I come up it's going to now show me that this is the buttonhole foot I, stitch I want. I want foot H because that's the non-stick. It's telling me that I want to, to use a specialty needle and it set the width, the tension, the width, the length, and the tension all for me. So now let's say I actually decide, no, I really didn't want to do this on leather. I meant to actually do this on a stretch light. So I'm going to press letter D, which is stretch light. And now up here it says me I'm on D, stretch light. Now it's telling me I should use foot C and that the buttonholes change. My tensions have changed. My needles change. So it sets everything up for you. So the fabric advisor is your tool to tell the machine what you want to do so it sets its correct tension, its correct pressure on the pressure foot, the correct stitch, and tells you what foot and needle to put in without you having to do a whole lot of research. And then when you're done and you want to go back to normal sewing, you would just press B for medium woven, and then you're back to normal sewing and tensioning and pressure on your pressure foot. I love this feature, it is exclusive to the Husqvarna Viking, and it is a great asset to have on the machine, especially when you get up to a machine of this level where it does some of the setup for you. The next thing I'm going to show you is the uh, 
the electronic assist. So basically that is what I also like to call the needle down pivot. So um, I have gone ahead and selected a blanket stitch that's used a lot in quilting for doing appliques and stuff. Um, but when I do it, I like it to be a particular size. So I've already selected it and I've gone into my pencil to edit it. And I'm going to make my length a three millimeter and my width a three millimeter. And that's just how easy it is. I could just change it. Now I come over here to my fabric and I have a heart here. I don't have it glued down or anything because I just wanted to show you how this works. Is um, I would normally use the open toe foot that become that is available extra for this, but I wanted to show you with what it comes with. With the machine so I'm going to use the a foot right here okay so what we are going to do is I am going to activate my needle down actually my needle down is activated so I'm going to go ahead and just do my stitching we're just going to do a straight stitch and a bite straight stitch and a bite okay so I'm doing this right on the edge of the fabric and what's going to happen is I'm going to get down here and I'm going to get down to the corner and I'm going to turn it to come up the other side I'm going to then going to tell it to um, okay so you what, what it happens and it stopped in the needle down position so then when I start to stitch uh, with the needle down it was going to allow me to pivot so the needle was down and the foot picked up so I'm going to do this again so I'm going to come this way again and it's going to stop I'm going to try to do this a little bit better I gotta remember what I was trying to show you is right now I'm on a curve so the needle stopped down the foot popped up so I can turn slightly and then I'm going to keep going and every time I stop that foot is going to pop up slightly so I can do a rotation yeah, you can do this with a machine that has the pressure foot up and down, you know, with your, your pressure foot lifter here, but you're constantly raising it up and down. See, that's one step I don't have to do. Every time the needle stops in the down position, it is automatically raised that foot for me. You see that? So doing these curves and stuff, I could just concentrate on watching my needle, watching my fabric, and going all the way around. And then when I'm done, I can use my scissors to tie off and it would then tie off at the end of that blanket stitch cut and then raise the foot so now you can see as I come out how I was able to perfectly follow that curve with it always raising the foot for me so I could concentrate on the pivot one of our favorite features of the machines with it not having a pressure foot lift so this is one that has that wonderful feature called the ESS and highly highly recommended for garment sewers for uh, hobby sewers bag makers quilters everybody it is a must-have all right, the next thing I'd like to show you is how to do the alphabet on this machine. They're very easy to do. So I'm going to go into my options here and open up the fonts. Again, you have four full fonts to choose from. I'm just going to do the block alphabet, the first one here. And when it comes up, I would just start, I'm going to type in Viking. So I'm going to type in the letter V, then I go to lowercase, and I, K, I, N, G. Where's my G? There, G. <laughs> and I'm going to check mark it okay. And there it is, Viking. And then I can come over here and just sew it. It's simply that easy. So I'm going to come, ah, untangle it from my foot control here. And I come right over here. And then I would just come in with my, one of my, yeah, we'll use this one again. And I'm going to just press the go key. And once I get started here, I'm going to press the stop key so that once it gets done, with spelling the, the single word, it will stop and tie off automatically right before the repeat. And then I'll stop and then tie off and then I use my scissor cut to cut it. And then, there you go. Viking, it's that simple. Okay, and then if you, if you can make your own quilt labels with this, if you have a young one that's in daycare or you want to put their name in their jackets and stuff and shirts before they go to school, this, this stitch is going to stay. This stitch is not going to go anywhere. It's going to stay right there. I like to do little uh, made for, made by, and the date I completed my quilts on little skinny borders and I'll write on the front of the quilt or on a table runner. I never put the date I started. Only when I finish, because sometimes it is embarrassing how long it takes, but that's okay. And then once it's wrote like this, you could do a little phrase, you do a little poem, all sorts of things. Really fun. Okay, the next thing we're going to show you is how to do a buttonhole. So let me get set up for that. 
All right, the next thing I'm gonna do here is a buttonhole. So I got out my buttonhole foot. I went ahead and selected just a standard buttonhole on my screen. And I do have my fabric with a stabilizer inside because normally when you do a buttonhole on a placket or something, you'd have like an iron-on interfacing or something. And then I have my button as well, which I got out of our big jar of buttons that we have right here. So when this happens, if you look at this foot, this foot actually does not take the button itself. It does plug up, it, plug into the machine, and then when you turn this, twirl this right here, it does have this crown that you make sure you start start on. Okay, so I'll get that installed in just a moment, but how do I tell it what size button I have if I just have it out of a bin? So it's done really easily. On the machine, if I bring you over here to the bottom of the machine, we have this ruler going across, but right here in the middle of the ruler, there actually is a metric ruler right here. So if I bring in and put my button directly on here and I can see that I'm about 13 millimeters, okay? Because I'm going by the numbers on the top and how many marks it's going to cover. So about 13 millimeters, which I always add two millimeters to, to my measurement of my button so that my button hole will fit it. So 13 means it would be probably about a 15 millimeter button hole. Now, if the button is really thick, I would add one more millimeter and make it 16. Okay, so the next thing we do is I'm going to take off my current foot here by pulling it towards me. And then this one just gets lined up. And then in our how-to video, uh, videos in our classes, we show you more in detail how this works. And then that just gets pushed directly in. When that happens, when I come over to my screen here, it has recognized that my buttonhole's in, foot is in. And I would come over and it wants me right here when my foot is plugged in successfully it's saying well what size do you want your button to be by default it comes up at 14 millimeters and i can see 16 millimeters is the next increment so 15 was not available it's only a millimeter difference keep in mind there's 25 millimeters to an inch so one millimeter is not going to make that big a difference on this actually I'll probably make it easier to to put the button in and and not be so tight so that's all good I'm just going to put my button over to the side now and I bring my fabric in and I'm going to start towards the edge here of where I want to start because it's going to sew this way. And then I am going to actually slow down my machine just a little bit because I'm going to use my start stop key here. And so when I slowed it down, I used my speed control here by pressing it and it slowed it down because I am going to use my start stop key and just going to stick back. We do a satin stitch forward. So I stitch back again. Far tack at the top. And do a satin stitch forward. And I'm just finger touching this. I'm not holding it all. Um, I just want to prevent it from stretching or twisting, which I've never had a problem with that. And it's going to tie off, and I'm going to use my scissor cut. And then I'm going to open this up, take this out, and look, and I have a beautiful buttonhole. Isn't that gorgeous? And then I would just do it again and again and line them up. The next thing you do is I can also um, sew my buttons on by machine. So I would actually tell it I want to. I just selected my buttonhole, uh, sew a button on, and what's happened is you might have heard a clunk as soon as I did that. The machine, because I told it I want to sew my own button on, lowered the feed dogs by themselves. So I don't have to go in and lower the feed dogs. The machine did it for me. I'm going to take my, my button here and I'm going to put it right where I want. I'm going to put my needle into the first hole, lower my ankle directly on it. I'm going to turn it by hand to make sure it goes into the second hole. And I just press go. There we go. And I don't use my scissor cut on this. I actually come out and use my thread cutter on the side. And now that button's on there. That is not coming off. Really, really nice. So it will have all your utility stitches you're used to having, and a ton of decorative and embellishment stitches, four full alphabets, a touch screen, the needle pivot, the fabric advisor, your start-stop key. It has this beautiful 10-inch throat in here, and a full light bank here, as well as around the whole needle bar. This is a gorgeous machine for anybody who wants to take their sewing to the next level. And maybe embroidery is not something you're into, and so this does not have an embroidery module, it's just sewing only. Only. So this would be a great fit. Come on in and if you want to see more about it or get some pricing, come in and see us. 
or visit us at soundsewing.com. Thank you.